Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, uh, in this lecture, we would be looking at the section on the meanings of culture and the different forms of society, uh, how society has uh, evolved in terms of their economic uses. So, in a sense, we would be looking at the uh, few stages of uh, society in, re in respect to their economic perspective and we would also be looking at what ecological, what, what cultural ecology is. Now, moving on, we will try to first look at what this concept of culture is. The concept of culture as a way of life can be broadly categorized into a uh, few sections, the first one being behaviors, beliefs and meanings. Now, what is behavior? It is an attitude or ways of life which has been learned by an individual right from his childhood days and it is a never ending processes. So, this learned behavior which an individual uh, cultivate in his life in essence becomes part of the innate or personal identity of an individual. Now, there can be different ways of expressing one's behavior maybe it can be expressed uh, in different circumstances. Uh, for instance, if somebody dies, so there is an occasion where the mourning is being done. So, that also becomes part of the uh, social behavior of an individual or maybe an individual to some extent draws the boundary how to act in a particular social uh, environment in the public, how he act in his uh, private or domestic life will be different from what an individual actually does act in the public domain. Now, all these are in a sense being influenced by the way an individual learned uh, through his socialization process. And secondly, belief. What is belief? It is a sum total of what uh, an individual uh, practices through the norms and values of uh, his or her particular uh, society and this becomes part of the uh, tradition and it is more or less being carried on uh, through different stages of life and usually belief are expressed in a very uh, external or outward manner through practices. Now, an, an individual also tries to express certain meanings. For instance, a behavior has some kind of attached or added meanings to it, where 
a society in essence maxims of his behaviors or actions. And the second section of uh, cultural expression or culture as a way of life is the material, the material aspect which is also popularly known as uh, material culture. There are sort of objects which are part of uh, a human society which are being uh, valued and which has, which has a lot of uh, functional values. It could be in terms of uh, a possession, for instance, the kind of value which different societies attach uh, uh, values to it might not be the same. Now, for instance, the, if you compare the western society and some of the uh, traditional societies, the manner in which how uh, meanings or uh, status are being perceived differs. For instance, uh, in a hunting society for example, killing an animal is in a sense accorded a very high status, but then that might not be similarly the case with other societies. So, it depends on different forms of societies, how do we express and make sense of the actions which we are engaged into. Now, it can be mental social products and it goes on. Now, some of the characteristics of what culture is uh, will be looked at. For instance, what is shared and integrated, because unless the members of the society have shared meanings to uh, certain things, it cannot be considered as culture, because it is jointly uh, integrated into their uh, way of life. So, these are in some sense part of the characteristics of uh, that particular culture. And many of these uh, culture practices, values, all these things as I discuss is not something which is a natural process, rather it is something which is learned, which over and again depending on the kind of stages of life they have learned. For example, if you take the uh, youth dormitory system, which is prevalent in many tribal societies, this youth dormitory system is seen to be a center of learning or maybe a center of education much before the coming of this modern education. Now, in that youth dormitory what those uh, youngsters normally do? They are being trained or the values, the traditions, the belief, all these are being imparted by the senior members of the society to their young ones so that they become a responsible adult in their future life. Now, culture can be also symbolic and relative. Now, what is symbol? Symbol is something which is, uh, which have usually uh, embedded meanings attached to it. Now, it can be uh, material and non-material. For instance, there can be a symbols which have adequate meaning to a particular society. Now, it can be in terms of objects or it can be in terms of a verbal expression or even uh, a facial expression. Now, uh, a Maori 
indigenous people, when they greet, they hold tightly and then try to uh, fix their forehead to the others. So, this might sound or appears to be quite unnatural to an outsider who does not belong to a Maori community, but to them it is a sign of greeting sort of uh, showing a real affection to someone. Now, culture is also adaptive and dynamic. As we all know, human society evolve over a period of time and culture it's itself by itself is not static. It is ongoing and it evolve and it adapt to different kind of changes or maybe if we try to relate with the present trends of climate change, certain communities might have a different adaptive mechanism in order to uh, adjust with the environment th which they have lived on or the ecological needs which they have occupied. Now, this particular concept called ethnocentrism and cultural relativism and critical cultural relativism can also be seen as part of a cultural community. Now, usually a particular culture group or an ethnic group normally have this is being uh, not really guided, but they have this ethnocentric feeling or they have uh, this a different perception about themselves and the others. That is that questions of being we and the other insiders and outsiders, those feelings which have been imbibed or rather that belongingness within in a sense inculcate this ethnocentrism, which means you tend to have a form a stereotype against an outsiders. Now, therefore, anthropologists and sociologists are engaged into learning different societies, their modes of behavior, belief, cultural practices or their sort of uh, ways of life. Because through this uh, engagement, they are able to make sense of uh, what actually is the belief and behavior of those societies. Now, this is perhaps uh, there are a lot of de definitions on what culture is, but uh, I am just trying to give highlight from uh, E. B. Taylor. Taylor is considered to be one of the foremost uh, in giving this definition. Now, what Taylor says is culture or civilization taken in its uh, white ethnographic sense is that complex hold which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom and other capabilities and habits which are acquired by man as a member of society. Now, this make uh, a complete sense of what culture is as we had discussed in the preceding slide. Now, Clifford Gates also uh, give another explanation about what culture is. To him, culture is the framework of beliefs, uh, expressive symbols and values in terms of which individuals define their feelings and make their judgments. Uh, these are the sources where I quote this definition. Now, if you look at this, individuals define their feelings and make their judgments. Normally, we tend to uh, conceive certain characteristic of uh, a different society may not be based on uh, 
the rational uh, rationality but those are merely based on sort of stereotyping or maybe much before we come into contact with those other communities or societies we have that kind of judgment depending on the kind of uh, belief and practices which an individual have in that particular community. Now, uh, on the right hand side uh, there is this cockfighting which in a sense uh, is again a cultural practices which is widely done in the, some of the indigenous communities. Now, I give an example of uh, in, the, in the Indian context how cow is considered to be a sacred animal because again these are part of uh, the cultural belief of a Hindu community. Now, may not necessarily uh, that this cow is sacred to other community. Right? Now, this sort of practices wherein certain animals are given sort of uh, a sacred image is largely a byproduct of uh, a cultural uh, practices which is prevalent in different communities. Now, what then is the culture? Culture in essence can be understood as the system of shared ideas and meanings, explicit and implicit which a people used to interpret or make sense of the world and which serve to pattern their, pattern their behavior. Now, again this in a sense completely uh, tries to make sense of how a community tends to make sense of uh, certain shared ideas and depending on that shared ideas and meanings which can be explicit and implicit. So, which usually through this uh, ideas we tends to have or perceive our world view are being set. Now, culture in a sense can be briefly uh, categorized as culture is a system, culture is a process which is not static and it is implicit and tacit which is external or in a sense uh, indigenous and it is also explicit and external. When certain uh, shared ideas which in a sense is uh, implicit when it is being expressed in action now then it becomes explicit and uh, visible to uh, someone uh, who even does not belong to that particular community. Now, what then is cultural ecology? How do we relate ecology and culture or how, how does uh, a society make sense or interpret ecology? Now, for many uh, stages of life, human enters into a certain kind of interaction with their environment and through these interactions they have in a sense adapt and learn certain kind of uh, values in relationship with the environment and this relationship might not be similar to uh, different societies it differs it depends on uh, what kind of societies has what sort of relationship with it. Now, that is perhaps one of the main ideas how we need to 
see things in context or maybe text in context. We can't afford to interpret things outside the context unless we try to see things in the context we will miss out certain meanings which are being embedded into that particular community. Now, in this interaction with the environment, uh, mankind has adopted different strate strategies and culture becomes a dynamic process. Now, for instance, the environmental setting the weather, the climate, the kind of terrain where one's inhabit or maybe depending on uh, the availability of water, forest. All this in a sense tends to have uh, an impact on the cultural practices of a society. Now, it also differs depending on the environment which we are into, the technology which we use that is the tools, techniques, knowledge. Right? Now, maybe the knowledge which an indi indigenous people have may not sound to be uh, that appealing or it might sound awkward and unscientific. But those knowledge are something which is been which has been learned as a result of their interaction with the environment. Now, similarly, the worldview, how we perceive the way the perceptions which we have on things around us is also influenced by the kind of environment which we are exposed to and the external forces and institutions, uh, we cannot afford to see a society in isolation at least in the modern days period. So, these external forces for instance, the market economy has sort of uh, a far reaching impact on a tribal society, the way they relate to their resources, the way they make sense of their overall relationship within the members of the society, how they value things has changed and evolved as a result of these external forces. Now, uh, what then is adaptation? Uh, if you look at this definition which is given by Stephen Jay, it can be or be it biological or cultural, it represents a better fit to specific local environments, not an inevitable stage in a ladder of progressed wheels like wings, fins and brains are exquisite devices for certain purposes not signs of intrinsic superiority. Now, these are something where in a sense the external forces, let us say the environment has enormously influences an individual. The explicit in a sense uh, have influenced the implicit. Now, some of the key issues uh, while discussing uh, culture or maybe in cultural ecology, we need to look at uh, certain points like for instance, the carrying capacity that is the upper limit on production and populations in a given environment that is which I have time and again pointed out the demand and the supply how it functions. Now, there is also this uh, sustainability and stress and how are these to be looked at? How is sustainability to be maxims? 
we can't afford to make sense of sustainability out of the context. Again, we need to see things in context and try to find the deeper meanings of how a cultural uh, community makes sense of their environment. Now, there can also be cultural basis of conflict, resources as factors in conflict. Now, conflict in the modern parlance and what it used to be in traditional society is also different again. Now, the conflict in traditional society might be based on intertribal warfare, where usually raidings are being conducted. So, more or less those uh, raiding were in the northeast India again, uh, you might have been familiar about the head hunting head hunters. Again, this tribal communities at one point uh, beginning from much much pre colonial encounters and then even in some period even when they encounter the colonialist they still practices this head hunting. Now, what is this head hunting? Usually, a different uh, community is being uh, raided and they bring back the heads of those enemies which are known to be trophies. Now, again this head hunting practices is to do with the kind of uh, a test of masculinity, because only an able bodied and a strong warrior can be successful in this kind of war expedition. But this conflict which I talk about usually in the intertribal warfare is not because of uh, something which uh, to do with the resources or the intention is never occupying or a territory or a territorial expansion, which in a sense is different from the modern uh, forms of uh, colonialism for example. Now, the imperialists in a sense or maybe the corporates uh, in the post industrial society usually are more or less interest in trying to uh, extract the resources uh, of their surroundings or maybe <clears throat> they try to you know uh, colonize or intrude in other world that is that, that is how colonialism and uh, this industrialization process in a sense goes alongside. Now, as discussed since cultural ecology directs our attentions to those aspects of the culture most related to making a living, anthropologists or if not sociologists need to understand the economic systems. Why is this economic system given so much important? We need a framework that allow us to compare all economic system without being ethnocentric. The reason being that what, what position and what uh, historical period of time where we are into, we might in some way ridicule and try to struck off the kind of economic system which has actually been prevalent in the past. Therefore, unless we try to look at the economic system which was practices in the past or in the different successive stages of societies, it will be difficult for us to actually locate the kind of uh, relationship which human societies uh, relate with their ecology. So, in a sense to have a wider understanding of uh, cultural ecology, it is important to look at the different trends of economic systems in different societies. 
and uh, by comparing different stages of societies maybe beginning from the hunting and gathering that is the foraging and then it goes on. Now, in our next uh, discussion, we will try to look into these different forms of economic systems in different societies, how they uh, prevailed and functions and what is the uh, sort of cultural ecological meanings to those people who have practices such forms of economic system.